Super excited today to have an opportunity to actually go into a maximalist style home. More, more, more. A French, who's he, what's it? It's, it's something that's, Peyton. I did a series of videos last year on the top 10 design mistakes that I have seen clients do in their homes. And many of you sent me photos of your homes and you gave me the permission to critique them and point out design mistakes. One of those videos was, you've got too much stuff. And that has been the most watched of that entire series. It's been incredibly popular. And I think this thing, a lot of stuff, is a thing. Well, somebody said, because I read the comments, someone said, but Rebecca, what about us maximalists? And I'm gonna be honest with you right now. When she said that, I thought to myself, you mean you hoarders? Shame on me. There is such a style called maximalist, and I've done all the research and I've checked into it. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to show this style to you. So let me give you the, the overall um, keywords would be more, more, more. That and color. Here's one of the ways to know if you have or want to have the maximalist style. Do you like color? because maximalism is all about color. And I'm not talking tans, golds, rusts, greens, and browns. I'm talking bold color in all its glory. And that's what makes it so exciting. A maximalist is someone who finds value in everything they purchase or bring into their home. Everything has a story. And there is a, there's a continuity between these things. A maximalist is the kind of person who collects accessories or collects, well, just collections of any kind. In the maximalism style, more is everything. Covering your walls to create spaces that tell a story. More is beautiful. You'll often find different wallpaper, very like print wallpaper with bold or rich or deep colors. A maximalist will sometimes put wallpaper on the ceiling. There's no rhyme or reason other than it makes you smile. That's why you collect the things you do and you wanna display them. It's a mixture of old found items and for people who love color. A room like this creates a feeling of, well, for some people, overwhelmness and claustrophobia. But for others, it speaks to their soul. It makes them happy. It makes them smile when they walk into their room. This is a style you can create and it, it has all the things you love. And I've talked to people in my one hour consultations who have too much stuff, but they love their things. And now I'm looking at it like, you know, maybe I need to embrace that as a designer and give people ways and ideas they can do this successfully in their home so that when people come over, they enjoy being there just as much as you do. What kind of furniture would a maximalist be drawn to? Well, something that has vintage quality to it, some sort of special meaning that they picked it up on the side of the road or someone was getting rid of it and they said, I'll take it. Maybe they reupholstered it in some bright, fun, textured color. When I say vintage, I mean, it could be a traditional piece of furniture that is painted some zany color. You would have coffee tables because surfaces are very important to maximalists. Why? Because that's what you put things on. And if you don't have a flat surface, you're gonna put it on the wall. Area rugs for the maximalist style are typically very bold in color. They have big patterns. They may even have small patterns, but usually the larger patterns are more eye-catching and that's why it draws you in. And of course, a large rug if you can do that, but really in a maximalist room, I think the size of the rug matters less because there's so many things that are gonna be on top of it. When it comes to lighting, let's say we're talking lamps. 
it would be similar to the furniture in that you could buy things at flea markets, at swap meets, antique stores, anything that's vintage, found, gifted to you, um, something that you might get and then you redo it. I remember once I got a, um, some sconces that had pink marble on them and, uh, and we put little pink shades on it and a colored bulb in it. I mean, that is, it's just found and it's unusual, unexpected. It's just fun, fun stuff. And it can be floor lamps. You can also do chandeliers. Now a chandelier for a maximalist might be, you know, if you wanna go high end, you could do a Murano glass chandelier with the glass pieces. Anything that's colorful and has a shine or a glimmer to it would be total maximalist. Well, when it comes to art, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can, it, the maximalist style is to put as many pieces of art on the wall as possible with a small amount of space between each thing. This is not the style where you're creating a pattern, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all over the place, different size canvases or photos, different frames, none of that matters. It's just covering the walls with everything, not that you can get your hands on, but everything that you love, everything that means something to you. And it's pretty much everywhere. Accessories, uh, where to begin? The maximalist accessories, for one thing, they're all bold and colorful. I actually went to a store here in Tulsa called Sasha, and she had a plethora of things to choose from. I pulled together some stuff and created a little vignette for you to take a look at, and you can see all kinds of colorful, fun uh, accessories, including acrylic and metal and not so much baskets. This isn't really a basket thing. This is about hardcore color fun. I'm in Sasha, which is a store here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And one of the things I love about her store is she has got the most outgoing, zany, colorful personality in the things she buys for people to come and shop. This room, I just put all this together. This is what I would call a colorful, maximalist look. So you'll see all kinds of interesting little art objects. Everything in this room, if this was my house, everything in this room would have a story. Everything would have a meaning. I mean, and everything would be colorful and fun. And what looks like at first impression wouldn't really go, it actually, I think, looks pretty amazing. And it's just pulled from everywhere in the store. So take a look at these items up close and get a better idea of what today's maximalism looks like. I was thrilled when Mike, my realtor, was able to find a home here in Tulsa that follows the maximalist style. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see it in real life. Turns out these two guys that own the home they have done such a good job. And what you're gonna see in this clip, this part of this video, is this is how you can do maximalist without going nuts. It's a toned down version, but it's still a lot of things. It doesn't come across that way. It comes across, well, well, I'm not even gonna tell you anymore. I just want you to watch it. You'll get it. I would call this maximalist done well. Jared and Peyton have done such a great job decorating their home. They've mixed the traditional and old world objects and things from other countries with very contemporary things at the same time. And what they have is a very colorful, unexpected and fun environment to call home. As with the maximalist style, having a rich, powerful color area rug on the base is a great foundation to get started with. You'll notice things like the hot pink pillows and then the blue and white pillows that come together here with the blue and white table. But look at this modern sofa. And behind me, there is a fabulous bust. Apparently she's very heavy from what I hear. But you'll see that this style is so fun. Now, from where I'm sitting, right, what you're looking at right now, you're going, that's maximalist. This view, not so much. But come sit here and take a look at that view. Mm -hmm. 
love, love, love this dining room. Now, what I think is so great, and this is why I say this is maximalist done well, these guys, they collect all kinds of special pieces. And not only that, when you think of maximalist, you think of just stuff, stuff everywhere. The reason I feel like this is well done is they have created this built-in, each one individually lit for their collections of things. And as I sat here and I really just looked at it, I saw so much balance in the color placement. For example, look at this pot. This one is identical to this one. This right here, you've got some brass pieces, while down over here, you also have some metal sculptures. So the connection, it has, there's peace in it at the same time that there's so much to feast the eyes on. Even the dining room table with this really awesome geometric print pattern on it. You have mid-century modern chairs with a very contemporary glass and chrome table for the dining table. And then, hello, gorgeous. These candelabras are spectacular. I mean, I don't know who has to clean them, but somebody definitely does. So this is a really great little tutorial on how to successfully mix all kinds of different things in your built-ins and have it go so well with the piece of art here. That's where I get my piece. There can be a lot of stuff, but when there's a connection with things, just like they connected it this way, it's connected this way. Even as I stand here before I go on into the kitchen and the family room, my eye is enjoying this so much. For example, right in the center of this room, very, very symmetrical by the way, which is unlike most maximalist home, but these stargazer lilies, they're in a crystal vase, right? But then the flower is soft pink with this deep, hot pink throat down the center. And you know what that does for me? I look over in this room and I see a crystal vase sitting right here in between these two green chairs. I see the chrome matching the silver of the candlesticks and I see the hot pink on the pillows on these chairs. And for me, this is just like, this is a designer's dream. I am loving this and it's so unexpected. I would say that Jared and Peyton have created a one of a kind home, which is how everyone's home should look. Know your style, know how to mix them, and then come up with something that is uniquely you. And they have 100% done that. I mean, they did such a good job. In the family room, more bright colors, collections, books, pieces, found things. But look at their glass collection, along with the beautiful vases and decanters on the very top, having the mirror behind it and then putting it on glass. I mean, it just looks great. The coffee table with stacks and stacks of books, a collection of brushes, you know, like, you missed a spot. Oh, yeah, got it. Uh, it with different color handles, it's just, Ah, I, everywhere you look, it's just a feast for the eyes. You know what really I love? I love sherbet between the courses. You know what I'm talking about? If you are my age, you'll know what it is. It used to be that when you'd have like an eight course meal or a six course meal, they would bring sherbet, sherbet, sherbet into you to cleanse the palate. That's what I think of when I take a look at this kitchen. I think the kitchen is gonna to have to go into my contemporary video because this kitchen is mostly white. They have a few of the chinoiserie uh, pots on top, but this does not feel maximalist to me. It feels far more minimalist and yet it still connects with the rest of the house. It gives your, your eye a place to rest where not every wall has to be covered in something. Love this kitchen, it's beautiful, love it. All right, let's go look at some more rooms. Here we go. Just watch me now. So this is Peyton. He's one of the homeowners. And uh, you were going through this and showing me some of the things that you and your spouse collect. And uh, what what's the name of this china here? So that's Rose Medallion. Uh-huh. And that's Chinese. And how long has it taken for you to collect all that? So those have come from all over. Um, so 
some we got in Palm Beach, some here in Tulsa, some is kind of here and everywhere. He just likes things, both of you like yes. things. You're the more contemporary one. Correct. And your spouse is more the traditionalist yes. and, and old world type things. And so two of his other favorite collections are Heron. I call that his Heron Zoo. <laughs> Awesome. We have one for both of our two dogs, a corgi and a foxhound. Oh, cute, <laughs> cute. And then uh, you also have, I see, quite a hefty collection of National Geographic. Yes, we have about from 1970 to late 90s. So, so quite a good collection. My parents always had mm. National Geographics, and I don't think I've ever seen anyone display them quite so interestingly. Usually you just see a bunch of yellow, right? right. And just <laughs> they're just all over the place, but you guys have broken them up and used them as a backdrop and then brought that yellow back in in other items on the shelves. All in all, thank you for allowing us to see all of your personalized items because right now you know where we're gonna go. We're gonna go into the bedroom and we're gonna check that out. It's also, I would say, pretty maximalist, mm -hmm. but done with good taste. Well, thank you. And you've got the walls painted in here. Yes. The one room that is not white. Okay, I'm just going to include this in this video because it is a maximalist house and you do see touches of it. I mean, when you have a table that has this many items on it, that falls into maximalist. But honestly, the overall feel of this room is really quite serene. They've done such a beautiful job, again, with more art pieces, special mirrors, contemporary lamps, a modern bed. I mean, it's a real mix of styles, a very antique, traditional type a bench at the end of the bed. This also looks very traditional to me. And of course, this beautiful French Bombay chest. And again, more of that collection of porcelain items. And look how beautifully it goes with the piece of art above the bed. So yeah, this is a maximalist home and there are a lot of things, but not every inch is covered. And it's so well curated, it doesn't feel too overwhelming. Peyton, thank you so much for letting me come and see your home today. It is really exquisite. It's extraordinary. There's the word. I knew it started with a vowel. You guys have done such a good job. And uh, how do you feel about living in a home with this many things, all these collections? Yeah, and no, it's been really fun. So my husband's more maximalist, more traditional. I'm more contemporary. So it's been a great blend yes. and kind of white walls with the more antique items. It's been a fun mix and it's been fun doing it together. You know, it's all kind of molds, molds well and it's been fun. Well, I am very honored to be able to be here. One of the things that I was learning about the style of maximalism is um, everything has a story and that's kind of the personality of the people who like to live in homes that have collections of things and a lot of things. It's, it just, it's like the house speaks you know it tells you something and you know I was moved I go into people's homes all the time and I don't sit there and go look at how they connected those colors and do you see how that went there like that was an unusual reaction for me so I don't know if it means anything to you coming from me but I will <laughs> tell you you guys have done a wonderful job well, thank you so much yeah and I also want to say come here Mike um, the reason I know Peyton now is because they are friends. Peyton and Jared are friends with Mike Keyes, my realtor, who again got us into a great house in Tulsa. You're so sweet. I appreciate you coming and visiting with my friends. Yeah. And hopefully uh, you've been able to see a great mix of, of yeah. architectures and styles. Completely. In the we've seen. Yeah, it's been really, really nice. So, yeah, um, I think Mike is an amazing realtor. I always say this, you know, he's not paying me to say this. <laughs> I'm saying that I could not have had a better realtor in a new city that we moved to and he's continued to be a friend and look he helped me out with this project so thanks to you and I can't wait to meet your husband yeah for sure all right okay guys that's it for this part of the video where we actually walk through a truly maximalist home
All right, guys, I think that's it. I mean, this is maximalist, so I could just talk on and on and on because more is more is more, right? I hope you've had a chance to take our free style quiz because we put this together in an effort to help you identify what styles you are most drawn to. And so far, we have had thousands of people go and take that test, and I think I think we're kind of opening up people's eyes as to, you know, what style am I? You know, if you don't know your style, take the test. If you do know your style, take the test. Why? Because more is more. No. <laughs> because my style, I can tell you my style has changed. I know what I was when I bought this house and I know what if I was to redo my house now, I think I'd go in a completely different direction. Why? Because different season of life, something that brings me joy and that I would enjoy doing. So it's kind of fun just to retest yourself and see where you land. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you come back when we upload the next video in this series on styles. I promise you we'll have some things that you may already know and we're gonna have a lot of things that you don't and we're gonna just refresh our brain on what we do know about interior design styles and why it might be important for you to identify yours. Okay, I hope you've had a good time today. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Are you, if you had to choose, okay, they're extremes, but if you had to choose, would you be a minimalist or a maximalist? Can't wait to read your responses. All right, you guys, love you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. A French commode chest, right? Is it a commode? Is commodes a bathroom? Okay, that's not a bathroom. Hmm. Uh, a, <laughs> a French, who's he, what's it? <laughs> it's, it's something that's like, Peyton.